World War One and the Russian Revolution. And so if you have questions and uh, questions for this video, uh, it talks about economic, political, and social conditions characterized by 19th century European nations, which nations were dominant, and what has been the long-term impact of 19th century European imperialism. This is just a picture depicting World War I, also known as the Great War at the time, from 1914 to 1919, as a time parameters. Um, the main causes of war, militarism, allying system, imperialism, nationalism, just like they started the war was the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand of Austria by Gavrilo Princip of the Black Hand. Origins of World War One: Early nationalism. The Pan German movement seeks to unite all German-speaking people, and the Pan Slavic movement, hung Austria-Hungary, contained both. Um, it was chosen alliances, clarification of armed strength, called competition, and the Triple Alliance with Germany, Austria-Hungary, and Italy, and then the Triple Entente, Britain, France, and Russia. Um, this is just a map of the alliance system. Uh, purple, Germany and her allies, red, Britain and her allies, the green people joined war on Britain's side, and the yellow people joined the war on Germany's side. Um, this is the Schleifen Plan, showing us the German forces would go to attack the Allied forces, and this began because um, they were going to attack, France assumed they were going to attack through Auschwitz and Lorraine, but then Germany came through Belgium, according to the Schleifen Plan, and they came close to Paris before being bogged down into a dreaded two-front war. A big thing in World War I was trench warfare. Um, you know, trenches are covered with barbed wire and landmines, um, like the land was, and so, you know, it was a no man's land. It was the death zone. Um, it stretched 600 kilometers from the North Sea to the Swiss border, and the Battle of Somme and Tente suffered 60,000 deaths in a day. One single day. What about Russia? This is the Romanov family, and uh, Sir Nicholas II of Russia, right there in the middle, and um, very interesting people. A lot of cool stories. Okay, so here's the political chronology of Nicholas. Um, there was the 1905 revolution, and then the form, the October manifesto of 1905. Um, 1906 fundamental laws, you know, civil liberties, legislative agreement, and social reform. Um, his personal life, he led military culture. This is his family tree, and <coughs> um, he married Princess Alexandra. So back to the Romanov family. This is the life of them. Um, this is their house. I'm not going to try and pronounce the name of the estate. It's crazy. Um, this is the billiard hall. It's really pretty. Um, let's see inside of their house. It looks incredible. Um, here's some pictures of their family. I mean, more of their house. Some one terrace. Wow. It's just huge. <coughs> and this is their city life of also them. Um, so, with the Romanov family is Guru Rasin, and he's one of my favorite people ever, actually. Um, he was seen by many as this puppet master to the Romanovs, and he controlled Nicholas and his wife Alexandra. Um, and he was dominating Russian court, and he has a picture of the family, and he's right smack dab in the middle, he's wearing the beard. Um, so this is the lyrics to the song, um, I'm not going to play it right now, because I don't have to do that. Uh, but it's, it's called Rasputin, and it's by Boney M, and it's one of my favorite songs, and I put it in the background of my economics video, and it's really great and it basically tells the story um he was living strong and people looked at him with terror and fear uh he could 
includes the Bible as a teacher, uh, but also as the kind of teacher. And then the desires, um, like the lover of the Russian queen, uh, Russia's greatest love machine, the one that was just stolen, that we carried on. Um, and he ruled the Russian land, and never mind the czar. Um, and all affairs of state, he was the man to please, but he was really great and had a great crew. Um, for the queen, he was no real or dealer, though she'd heard the things he'd done. She believed he was a holy healer who would heal her son. Um, and then they wanted to kill him. And so, um, it says, But when his drinking and lusting and his hunger for power became known to more people, the demand to do something about this outrageous man became louder and louder. And, um, so, <laughs> they, um, poisoned him, and they didn't kill him, and then they shot him, so he was dead. And then they, you know, he was dead, and then they sunk him in a river. Uh, so, after two death attempts, one successful. Um, so this is just a bunch of really cool facts about Rasputin and the Romanovs. Um, I can pause and read, I don't want to read it all, obviously, it'll take a lot of time. More things to read. And then, you know, the Romanovs, they died, some went missing. And then this is a timeline of and the Russian Revolution. Who was to blame for the Russian Revolution? War, the haves and the have nots, social discontents, um, the Bolsheviks. Um, the Bolshevik experiment was coming to power. Back and forth in top 13 years. Um, in power, having to contend with ideals and values about the revolution, class suspicion of all elites, state nested interests, games of Moscow conflicts. Um, this is Vladimir Lenin. Um, he's very important. Um, it's Ah, the Lenin was the fictional power was a kingdom state. Um, you know, he said creative enthusiasm of the revolutionary classes was the one of the goals. You know, take matters into your own hands, tremble away waiting for no one. Um, authoritarianism was the discourse of control, ruthless suppression, iron discipline, dictatorship. Uh, this also says a year of proletarian dictatorship. Um, early Bolshevik political practice however um reform workers control self determination improvement the woman section of the communist party was the Zinotdo uh, decentralized and had authoritarian policies the one party government class control um attempt to control the economy and labor and then there was civil war and there was coercion, violence, authoritarianism, emancipatory idealism, and experimentation. And then the devastation by 1921, there was an economic collapse, social rebellion, and dissidence within the party. So, the Russian Revolution had a lot going on there. Um, there was the new economic policy in the 1920s, uh, and it like a small scale production and commerce within society. Oops, my bad. Um, there was economic progress, cultural development, civil society revitalized, repression and control, conflicts and struggles between classes and generations. Um, and then crime and workers' decadent public life um, and popular culture. Obviously, most of these things. Um, contradict each other, which is why it's a contradictory society. Um, there were communes, women's emancipation, workers started without a conductor, domination, um, it was like idealism, and they tried to transform everyday night life. Um, <laughs> this basically says, women, learn to read, and the kids, the, at the bottom it says, 
hey mama, if you knew how to read, you could help me. So it's like more about learning, getting to do more things. Um, there's modernism. I love teachings on electricity. Um, and there's a thing written about Vladimir Krilov called The Iron Messiah. He especially says they refuse the path to communism. And the Soviet Union. I went to the Silk City from March 1918. So, I hope you enjoy learning about World War One and the Russian Revolution.